Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In the comments to previous videos on Starship, people asked me to make a super heavy heavy, basically three super heavy cores together, and I didn't like that for a variety of reasons. First of all, I'm morally against heavy configurations. Uh, that is because they're just meant to be cheap, they're not very efficient, uh, because you have to throw down the core, and the core is carrying more engine than it needs. And it's not vacuum optimized engines, they're the same engines as on the other ones, so they're sea level optimized. And it's just all really bad. When you work out the math, every heavy configuration is a little bit sad. Uh, but, but they're meant to be cheap because you're duplicating the same thing uh, three times, but then somehow Delta Four Heavy manages to be really expensive and... I don't know, uh, Falcon Heavy got sort of scooped by Falcon 9 because originally Falcon 9 was less powerful and so Falcon Heavy would have been necessary in order to get certain payloads to GTO but Falcon 9 can pretty much do most things now because they upgraded the engines so Falcon Heavy rarely gets launched so anyway but that's a whole thing and Angara never happened so uh, well maybe it'll happen but uh, yeah this common core thing is a dubious thing altogether but also there's the fins at the bottom of Super Heavy making it problematic and also the whole recoverability thing with the the center core is going to have a tough time being recoverable in that configuration so I don't really like it that much and it's not gonna do a whole lot for the payload capacity either surprisingly enough because you just can't fit too much in that volume I mean 100 tons is a lot Skylab was 80 tons and Skylab was huge so yeah I, I yeah anyway but but there is a heavy configuration we can do for those heavy fans and that is Starship heavy well I'm a little bit too close Starship Heavy. Yes. Starship Heavy you can do. Starship Heavy actually makes sense. And uh, let me explain. I mean, obviously, uh, if this can get the payload to orbit that Starship plus Super Heavy does, it's simpler because you're only creating one vehicle, right? And you're just creating three copies of the same thing. But instead of using the same engines, the same uh, sea level engines on all of them, you have the central one having the three vacuum and three sea level, just like it normally does. But the outer two, uh, which I will call the cargo ones, uh, will have just the sea level, sea level engines. Now, the Starship should be able, to, I don't know why there's all this flickering. Um, I feel like I've done something wrong with the models, but I don't know what it is. But anyway, I felt maybe we'll find out when we fly it. But now this does mean there's a little bit more mass on the tail of the Starship, but it's already designed to deal with that because it has... Yeah, I must have done something really horrible. Anyway, um, because it's already uh, dealing with the possibility that maybe it has a payload in front and maybe it doesn't, so the COM is going to be shifting back and forth based on that. Anyway, uh, the outer ones actually aren't going to have crew. Um, they actually have more fuel tanks. I turned this into a cargo version. I made it still look like the the normal Starship with the windows because I like that. But and yes, I know the 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 bay doesn't open the way the the SpaceX one does. I did it this way. Go figure. Anyway, but what we have here is a uh, additional fuel tank for it to use, and then this fuel tank uh, will be locked. So that is for landing fuel. And I don't know if that's enough landing fuel or anything, but that's the idea here, that that one's really locked. Okay, so we will see. Now, the idea with this is that uh, these, this will all launch from Brownsville, and maybe the booster ones, the cargo ones, can be recovered at Cape Canaveral if we launch in that direction. Uh, hopefully, I'll get there, but yeah, I feel like I left some vertices in the wrong place I I thought all I did was mess with the I don't remember this happening for just Starship before I'm confused okay well there's this dancing stuff I don't know what that means but let's try it out so uh, Starship here does have its nominal payload of uh, 100 tons as usual plus the crew capsule by the way uh, so that adds mass to it and we can close that up and la yeah let's see if uh, let's see first if it can get this payload to orbit in this configuration 
Alright, well, we don't seem to have any dancing stuff here anyway, so maybe it'll be alright. So here it is. This is what it looks like. Obviously a huge drawback is the drag. I had to move the three vacuum engines off to when we can light vacuum engines, so they're not going to light on the ground here. The thrust to weight ratio right now is uh, 1.43 on the ground here. Uh, the delta V reading is not going to be correct. And yeah, we will see. But the the additional tanks, by the way, I should have mentioned, the, the tanks that are going to be used during launch are 200 tons. So that's an additional 200 tons there, which it can, it can deal with. Obviously, it has the thrust weight ratio. Uh, in total, we have 22 engines at the bottom of each of the cargo ones. And, you know, uh, technically we could have fit even more because they're nine, nine meters in diameter. So there is possibility for more thrust to weight ratio if we need it. Okay, ignition. So that's uh, 47 engines altogether. And launch right now and then uh, 50 once we light the vacuum if we want to light the vacuum I don't know if we want to light the vacuum to be honest uh, until the other two separate so it's like this and actually we want to go to a slightly northerly heading to get to Cape Canaveral so after this test to see that the payload can be sent to orbit properly, we'll check where the heck one of these ends up. I don't know if we could land on its tail or anything, but that's still a whole business. Though I added the descent mode to see if we could, but that takes a lot of balancing that I have not yet done. This is similar to a British space plane idea where there were three space planes back to back. Similar to my Shinkansen idea, except that's just two. But perhaps my Shinkansen could do with being three because it doesn't have much payload capacity with just two. Oh, I think the fin coloration is reversed on this one because I copied it from the other side, but it didn't really copy the, the painting of the fin the right way. I'll have to fix that. At least I didn't put them on in symmetry or anything. But can we really get them to get to Cape Canaveral from Brownsville? Of course, the entire Gulf Coast could be somewhere where they could land eventually. But Cape Canaveral would be the most convenient place. You've seen this sort of thing with my uh, space plane tutorials for Realism Overhaul as well, uh, just with one mothership and one space plane. We're basically treating both of these as that one mothership. Okay, we'll light the vacuum engines now. There is also a matter of trajectory optim optimization. Uh, well, we should probably have gone for a heading of 75, but uh, it's also possible we should have gone horizontal a little bit faster. Let's throw down here. I don't know how far the carrier starships can glide. Now for the mothership space plane in the tutorial, we saw that 3,000 meters per second was basically the limit for it, but that was also pretty close to what we needed to get in order to glide back to Cape Canaveral, so we're going to be short of 3,000 meters per second, and so it might not be enough horizontal velocity here. But first we'll focus on getting the core up to orbit. If it can get to orbit with a lot of margin, maybe we'll underfuel it, and that'll allow the other two to get further along before decoupling. Of course, they still have some of their own fuel. I don't know how much that is, really. I just fit what I could in the nose. Nah, it looks like uh, we don't have too much margin. Okay, separation. 
Well, that could be more vigorous, but I guess it's okay. Throttle up. I don't think they have return to launch site fuel. I didn't pack that much in, but we'll see. Thinking about how to make fins that tilt the right way, but I don't know. I don't even know if if Kerbal will understand the control scheme of this, so it's tough. It is possible that if we have them boost back and land, we can take off the fins. Hmm. Well, we want some fins for control. I mean, we need like grin fins otherwise or something. I don't know if this total delta V is telling me the truth or not. It's being complicated by things, I suppose. Let's see, which one's the sea level ones? Uh, nope, that's the vacuum. Oh gosh darn it, I turned off the vacuum ones too early and for some forsaken reason they have only one ignition. Well anyway, we should still make orbit just fine. So yeah, this is why I was interested in this configuration because I figured that actually a Starship Heavy configuration could get, if you change the engines at the bottom, right, uh, could get Starship to orbit with its payload. And like just above Cape Canaveral, we can see the shuttle landing facility because it's sort of, it's a Kerbal Constructs thing. That's why it's sticking out like that. In fact, uh, well, we'll have to see about the reusability of the other two, but it's possible to get even more payload up. But we've got a healthy 437 meters per second in theory, and that's about what you would want in low Earth orbit. So this is good. That's about what Dragon would have or the shuttle would have. So, okay, or my Shinkansen. But, yep. Let us... I don't know why these read less fuel than those. Anyway. Let's see about the carrier planes, or the carrier starships, or the cargo starships, and see how much Delta V they have for return. Okay, so here we go again. Starship Heavy, one more time. Ignition. launch oh and uh, let's go to the 75 degree heading again actually conveyor also had a triple space plane idea back in the 60s it wasn't just the Brits I think conveyor and uh, British proposal uh, both occurred about the same time I think the British proposal was called mustard or something Interesting colors on these plumes. I just said to the real plume methalox plume. I hope this is right <laughs> Okay, everything's looking good our combined mass is currently that of well, it, it just went under Saturn 5 levels Just a reminder how heavy this all is and once again, this is with the 2018 Raptor test levels if the engines are uprated, then they give us newer numbers on the engines, uh, such that they have more than their current thrust. The current thrust on this is it's just going at 1,000, so it'll peak at 1,800 or something like that. Um, then, and I really need to get the vacuums going. Then, of course, we can do a fewer engines. Well, this wasn't too different from what we did last time. Okay, separation. And let me switch to one of these. This, uh, nope. Maybe I should open the cargo bay. There we go. Alright, RCS on. Surface positive, roll zero. Might need more powerful thrusters. Oh, I wish I'd picked that one with the right flaps, but we'll go with this for now. 847 meters per second, so it's not a lot of delta V. It's probably enough to land on its tail, but not enough to uh, 
to boost back or anything. We'll see about the landing on its tail business. So let's say we want to pitch for a glide. Oh, it's oriented. Let me uh, control from here. Somebody had mentioned that for another purpose. We need to make sure we control from there. That was for the shuttle engine recover bits. Hmm, the problem with my current thruster configuration on this is that we're not very good with roll. <laughs> Though the fins will certainly sort that out once we hit the atmosphere again, but roll is definitely being a problem. There's also that little decoupler. So, I mean, you could see if we had some sight along the Gulf Coast, even if we don't reach Cape Canaveral, if we had something along the Gulf Coast to land at, it could probably divert there. Or we could have our initial trajectory such that it was going at a higher inclination. Of course, it depends. I mean, we could go a little bit higher and still be over water with the main stage, just in case. And then, uh be able to divert to, I guess, Alabama, since uh, they get the contracts, but, um, uh, or something. Okay, now we're sorting ourselves out. I don't know how far we can glide, that's the question. Oh, the main stage is still audible from this distance. Up oh, at 22.5, it stops being audible. 185 tons, though. I, I feel like uh, we were a little bit too heavy. I should probably adjust the body's mass. I When I set the mass of the body, I didn't include the mass of the fins. It's probably supposed to be a little bit lighter. The mass of the propellant shouldn't be that much. Is it? Uh, it looks like our dry mass is 145 tons. I think that's too much. So I'll reassess that again, and that's, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's more than the normal Starship because we've got all these engines at the bottom, so there is that. But also, when I made the body, I didn't uh, subtract out the mass of the fins, so I'll, I can get a little bit out for that. We're really dropping like a brick at the moment. Fortunately for us, of course, the heat shielding is all the way around. That's just an artifact of how it works in Kerbal right now. But since this body is one part, and I didn't think it was feasible to make the bottom half and the top half, and though that that would be nice actually, I cut it in half and have uh, less heat shielding on the top and more on the bottom, and then have you put the two halves together, uh, possibly sandwiching some tanks in the middle. It's not an impossible idea. Okay, I think uh, it's got enough of a grip on the atmosphere, but we're dropping really fast. Are we going to be able to skip off and glide a bit more or not? I don't know if there's enough fin. And how bad is the heating going to be? And the G-forces. Oh, we've lost communication. <laughs> no, that's not what I wanted. Well, that's probably because of plasma or something. Oh yeah, we got some of it back now. G-forces. Well, the other one got destroyed, that's obvious. Oh, oh, we lost a fin. We lost another fin. Oh, this is not gonna go well. It's not very bullety. Oh, please don't all blow up. Oh, wait, wait, the body though. Oh, no, I saw the body was fine. No, 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 not the engines. Uh, the engines are important, but... Oh. Well, I don't think there's much we can do with this. I don't have communication anymore. Yeah, it's spinning badly. Oh, maybe maybe we'll get a physics glitch level of spinning. 
Ah, no, physics glitching did not save it. I was wondering if it, like, bounced off of the water or something. You never know. But, okay, so I'll, I'll wrap it up here for this initial test, but we, we need to do a few things. It'd be better if we were lighter. So reducing the mass of the starship is probably a good idea to account for the mass of the fins. It's probably too heavy right now. So, yeah, that's a thing. So I'll look into those ideas and we will see if we can recover these, uh, these side pods. I still have to do the main starship recovery as well. So that's a whole other business, but that's from Orbit. I'll get your thoughts on this system, the Starship Heavy version. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.